Uh, I'm Johanna Skouris. I'm an author of a self-help book called Standing Up for Yourself, The Art of Self-Assertion. Today I want to discuss love. Uh, when is love real? When is it an illusion? Let's look at the overuse of the word love. We say, I love chips. Uh, I love your hat. Um, when we're on the cell phone, we say to somebody, uh, love you. But we don't stop to think about how, how are we really using that word? Um, let's first think about how all relationships actually begin with self-love first. Self-love, how do we define that? Um, a form of self-care, self-protection, uh, being able to uh, stay, say, avoid people who are critical, self-destructive, uh, needing to be saved and so forth. Um, we're aware of our own feelings, needs, and rights that allow us to actually honor and understand the rights, needs, and feelings of the person that we are truly attracted to and supposedly living with and enjoying. Now, um, the British poet Tennyson said that tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Now, we don't really need love to survive, but it certainly makes life more interesting and more enjoyable. Um, how many of us have been hurt by somebody who uh, really knew what our weaknesses were and how to hurt us? Um, do we go into that bubble and we keep that distance and saying, I'll never do this again? Can we look perhaps at what it is that we may never, we have done wrong ourselves? What did we contribute to our own misery? Uh, there's a great quote. I don't know exactly who said it. The person said, um, history repeats what we never learn. Uh, do you get repeatedly involved in an abusive relationship and then wonder why is this happening again? So go back and examine yourself. How many times, say, in a relationship did you think of yourself as saying, um, I love you because I need you or I need you because I love you? Now, if you're saying, I love you because I need you, hmm, then ask yourself, what is it I actually need from you? Your car? Being able to have a place to live? Uh, because you boost my ego? Uh, you make me feel like you're my hero? Have I married daddy or mommy? And there's a kind of distorted uh, perception here. But let's look at it from another point of view then. If I can say that um, I need you because I love you, that means that maybe I love your spontaneity, your flexibility, your consideration of my feelings, my needs, your awareness of me. That's, that's why I want to be able to live with you, and I haven't been able to find somebody quite as interesting and reliable and honest as you. That's love. So, so I do need you because you, are, you sound like you're one of a kind. So let's examine that wor those words, love and need, and that may help you to re-examine your relationship and your ability to love. Now, another big question that relates around love is uh, parents. Should we love our parents just because they're our parents? Um, I have a lot of students and clients who have got tremendous guilt in feeling that, well, I should love them. They brought us up. Uh, they clothed us, they fed us. Is, is that what love is about, just the basics? What about listening to you? You know, many, many parents knew how to manipulate us with uh, sort of painful punishment under the guise of love. Uh, whereas um, we want love to be, you listen to me, you care about me. Um, if your parents are coming from a totally different culture with a different set of values, and you grew up in this American culture, uh, there's a lot of discord there. Did you obey the dictum, the values of your parents? Um, and meanwhile, deep down inside, you're really pissed off, but you do what they asked of you, and now you're 30, 40 years old, you're still doing what they ask you to do because you're the good child. Um, can you learn to stand back and consider where are your parents coming from? What cultural influences shaped them and therefore shaped you? Because if you can learn to understand, maybe you can also learn to forgive and accept. 
That means you're not attached to them by anger and resentment and still kind of trying to be the grown up when you sometimes feel like the child. Now, in my opinion, I don't believe that forgiving and accepting are equal to love, but it certainly is a lot better than anger, resentment, and hate. And this still goes back to being willing to give them the right to the choices that they either made by themselves or were also basically made by their family members. Now, you know, many, many marriages are built on the illusion of love. Um, it was a great song from the 80s called the Pina Colada song. Uh, many of you folks may never have even heard of it. But the bottom line was in this uh, song, uh, it was a young couple who enjoyed each other, uh, but somehow, I guess, the guy was getting a little bored, so he put an ad in the paper and asked, you know, if you like having pina coladas and you like making love in the dunes at night and dancing in the rain, whatever, maybe you should meet me, blah, blah. So, you know, he, he had a good relationship, but I guess he was bored. So he puts the ad in the paper and he gets an answer, says to this person, okay, meet me at this pub, blah, blah. And who comes in the door but his own girlfriend. And the great line in this song is what basically both people supposedly expressed to each other was, I never knew. So she never knew that he liked making love in the dunes. He never knew that she really loved pina coladas. So in many relationships, we know each other superficially where we know kind of like who likes steak, who likes vegan, this and that, who likes to play golf, who likes to go basketball games. Um, we may know superficial things about each other. Maybe we're afraid to actually express how we really feel about something. Uh, maybe introducing something new and different is scary in the security of a familiar relationship. Now, I'm not getting into kinky stuff right now. Uh, I'm just still talking about communication and being able to share what your deepest feelings are with somebody. That to me is one of the sort of foundation, one of the foundation pieces of serious love and learning how to forgive each other, not necessarily to forgive and forget. I'm not talking about abusive relationships. Um, just to refer to that very quickly, um, pathological love in, a, in an abusive relationship, the victim truly believes that he or she loves the abuser. There's fear and their so-called love uh, is very complex. I'm going to talk more about that next week on self-esteem because in all abusive relationships, the lack of self-esteem very low self-esteem is what keeps somebody bound to an abuser. Uh, but now, um, just to since we're on, I'm on that kind of uh, sphere right now. Sadomasochism, now sadistic or sadism, is basically inflicting cruelty, punishment, pain onto somebody who is called a masochist. A masochist is somebody who has a distorted belief that pain actually equals pleasure. And again, S&M relationships are very complex, still relate to self-worth and self-esteem uh, in both instances. The sadist has equally low self-esteem as much as the masochist. They need each other in, again, a pathological way. And pathological, I defined previously as disturbed thinking, unhealthy. And I know a lot of people do s and I'm not offering criticism. I'm simply saying this is what it goes on. These may be cause uh, reasons as to why people get involved in these kinds of situations. Um, as I may have mentioned, um, you know, we're, we're not stupid when we're growing up and parents give us pain, as I said, disguised as love. Um, the, the bottom line is, if it hurts, then it's painful. And if it feels good, then it's pleasurable. And to me, love should be certain, certainly around pleasure. Now, um, you know, sometimes folks are talking about um, liking each other. Uh, I asked my class, quite a while ago, um, what it was they actually liked about themselves. It may be hard enough to find out what we think is lovable about us. 
And the students actually kind of sat there for a moment, uncertain about what they actually liked about themselves. So I also asked the students, those folks who were parents, to ask their children, uh, what do you actually like about me? And one young uh, parent who was a single mom with three kids, still going to school full time and trying to work, um, she had three kids. And the one who had the most interesting answer was her mischievous seven-year-old boy. Uh, he wasn't really always getting into serious trouble, since there's not too much serious trouble a seven-year-old can get into. Um, but he was the one prone to always, whatever, having problems. So her two oldest children had said the, what we call cliches, the typical things, you know, you're loving, you're caring, blah, blah. But the seven-year-old boy actually took some time to think about how his mother treated him. And he said, what I like about you is that when you punish me, you're always fair. Now, that was, to me, a very remarkable statement for anybody, never mind a seven-year-old. So think about this, because if you think about what is likable about you, this may also make you, quote, more lovable. And I still want to reiterate the idea that if you do not have that self-love, it is going to be very, very difficult to really let go and allow yourself to feel something for that other person. Love is not going to be dictated by how we look, how much money we have. Uh, it's about how we're treated, how well someone listens to us, what they're willing to also share with us in terms of their deepest fears, their deepest feelings. But in every relationship, it has to be one of you who is willing to let go. Now, I've often had students uh, and clients also write out their feelings to this person that they may be involved with. And it may not necessarily have to be a significant other. It could be your own parent. You write a letter because you're not used to actually being able to say how you feel to somebody. In this capacity, you may be able to get feedback that will stop that communication because that's what real love is about. It's about sharing. It's about that surprise, like in the Pina Colada song, I never knew. So many marriages have been, to, people have been together for decades and they're almost like strangers, going through the motions, seeing each other day to day, maybe even having mechanical sex or even decent sex, but something deep inside their hearts has never really been shared with each other. So do they really have love? They have familiarity, they have security, they, they have each other, they've known each other, but how well have they really known each other? Sometimes when that ring is on that finger, people change. That saying, she's not the, the woman, she's not the man, uh, you know, she's not the woman that I married and he's not the man that I married, because we change. The ring can bring out the beast inside the man who considers the woman to be property. And it can bring out the bitch in the woman who perceives the man as the money bags. So be very, very careful how well you know yourself. This goes right back to one of my earliest videos about self-assertion, which definitely included self-awareness. If you know what your own weaknesses are and you know your own strengths and you can create boundaries, meaning what you will or will not put up with, um, this will help you in choosing someone who is probably more in tune with you as a human being, not as a sex object or as a money bag or whatever else. And learn from history. To reiterate something that I have said many times over, what you feel determines what you do. That also determines who you get involved with. If you have very low self-esteem, but you've never heard yourself say how much you hate yourself, you're going to gravitate towards someone who brings you down. Here's that s and component where somebody can bring out the worst within you and you allow it. I'll talk about self-esteem next week because everything that I have tried to discuss in each video is interrelated. Um, self-esteem is the pinnacle of everything that can make us survive and flourish. We can lose our jobs, we can lose our hair, we can lose our sex appeal, and eventually maybe get all of that back again. 
But if we have a deep sense of worth, that can never, ever be taken from us. So stay tuned for next week. Ciao.